Hello, welcome back to my channel, Edis English Literature. Today, we are going to read Andrew Marvel's To His Coy Mistress, a beautiful metaphysical poem. Andrew Marvel's poetry is an in-depth study of that age which is torn in conflict with revolutionary ideas and ideals. Whereas the church norms are there and the other way the uh, parliament is there. So the war is on and in revolutionary ideas, ideals everywhere there is a time which is not proper for peace of mind as well as external and internal. Andrew Marvel uh, at first started writing his poetry uh, on love and it also leads to some nature themes and religion. In all of them, he mixed delight. The delight is the pleasure of life and living with a simple uh, puritanic piety. And yes, that puritanic sort of revolutionary idealism was investing in Marvel's heart. And his writing cannot be devoid of that. Some of his works, which is typically a style of cavalier poetry, uh, and the latter half of his writing, which was um, political verses and satires that are in support of Cromwell. So his best works that include the so-called love poems as well as nature poems, as well as his political uh, sermons, everything, uh, there is a marvel, the person who is much involved with him. So, reading the text to his coy mistress, devoid of Marvel, the person is quite His coy mistress is purely a love poem, and uh, the garden is uh, a beautiful nature poem by, by him. Uh, Cromwell's return from Ireland that a Horatian ode upon he wrote, uh, that is a political parts or a kind of a satire. Uh, that has been uh, given a prominence in his So career. to um, move into the poem to his coy mistress, I would better sum up a few of the key points in Andrew Marvel's life. Andrew Marvel had been a businessman, a traveller. He had travelled extensively throughout the England and uh, after completing his uh, college, uh, he moved into politics. He was an MP uh, as being a parliamentarian. He was a supporter of Charles Straub Beasley and in many of the movement uh, his political ideas and ideologies uh, make a point. So Andrew Marvel as a political figure at that time as well as the pains of uh, Andrew Marvel had some say and this was very vital at that time. is also a carpe diem theme a beautiful English poem on Carpe Diem theme, in fact. Uh, the Carpe Diem philosophy is a Latin philosophy which means this is the pleasure of the day, which is akin to Charbak philosophy, which means eating and be merry, who knows what the happened. The poem has been written at a time when Marvel was tutoring a student, a girl student obviously, of some colonel's daughter. And during that time it was being composed, but exact date of the composition of this particular poem is not known. Many of English writers, be it a poet or a novelist, many of the titles as well as popular popular um, lines from poems are being uh, taken from this Marvelian poet to his coy mistress. As you all know, Andrew Marvel's to his coy mistress is a love poem, but it is a typically one and it's a metaphysical poem. So simply the poem that has been uh, pointed out its saying or its version of love or its version of uh, expressing the love uh, through a considered way through some imageries and that are typically a uh, marvelian and that is called metaphysical concepts to lead to metaphysical concepts uh, we can sum up that john dunn and his type of poets and his type of um, uh, writing which is quite uh, uh, intricate, complex and witty given a sincere expression of some artistic exuberance which has Dr. Johnson criticized as being affecting metaphysics. 
so that term is also applied to marvel too. so let's move to the poem to his square mistress is an invitation by the lover to his mistress to actively participate in courtship in love making in the first line the lover has set a condition and that is the very metaphysical way of stating the fact in some uh, witty way he begins the poem or the lover starts saying had we but world enough and time this coyness lady were no crime the very beloved of the speaker of the speaker lover is coy one is shy one is blasphemous one and she is not willing to participate in the courtship or physical intimacy but we all are limited by the very aspect of time and pace so our world is limited it is not endless perpetual and permanent if such were the case there had been no crime in making love spiritually or rather platonically but the reality of the world is hammering the conscience that it is inching forward towards death towards grave we would sit down and think which way to walk and pass our long love stay if such were the case that we had enough time to live on this planet earth we should walk and pass our long love stay that so long love stay it's like that of a prolonging a day which is full of love but here the day is long enough as well as making spiritual love long one how long a spiritual love can be when it is not being tested with the physical intimacy so the lover is quite erotic one the lover is quite uh, expecting his lady love to be sporty enough to be active enough to participate in the courtship thus with metaphysical competitions he again says thou by the indian ganges side should rub is fine i by the tide of hambar would complain being a parliamentarian marvel should have seen the hambar many a time so in reference he uh, refers to the hambar river he would complain he would see the hambar tides and you my beloved would see seated by the indian Gan ganges side and so rubies find idling your way so what's the utility of in platonic love even being separated by distance love is eternal and it will continue but have we but that time to spend such things with spirituality i would love you 10 years before the flood or you should if you please refuse till the conversion of the jews if such is the case that i am given endless time you are given endless time since there is no way that i would continue to love even when the great flood happened years before and i would even continue to love you until the convert conversion of the jews are possible both are improbable things distant past is the biblical story where the great deluge happened and conversion of the jews as it refers would never be possible so in such a long period of time they would sit it far afar and would con contemplate loving each other spiritually platonically my vegetable love would grow faster than ampers and more slow so here vegetable love is a invective rather used for Uh, or a taunt it has been used for a platonic love non carnal love a love which is only spiritual only of psyche only of mind no physical intimacy that growth of the vegetable and the growth of the empire as it is a slow and steady process but grows similar should be our love the entitles of our love would grow but slow in slow but steady processes 
and this would be the case when there is plenty of time and hundred years would go to praise thine eyes and on thy forehead gauge two hundreds to adore each breast I will take hundred years to praise your beautiful eyes thy forehead gauge and two hundred to adore each breast so you have your beautiful body you have your beautiful eyes I would take separate years hundred years in fact each of them to praise you but 30,000 to the rest and I will take 30,000 years to praise the each and every parts of you the position of your beauty would be entertained by my words throughout my lifetime as it is endless and 30,000 is a minimum time that I should take an age at least to every part I would take an age at least to praise as beautifully you are to describe your parts of beauty and this age you should show your heart you should reveal the very as like that of a revelation of Saint John you should reveal the beauty of yours the purity of yours heart and for lady you deserve this day nor would I love at lower rate but I had no, I am not in haste if there is time enough. If you deserve your state like that of a perpetual beauty, I would not lower the rate of loving you in any way because I am a true lover of yours. But the lover continued to say that, but at my back I always hear time's winged chariot hurrying near. But behind us, there is the eternal time with winged chariot is hurrying near us. The very chariot of time is nearing us with a must hurry, with must haste only to take away our dislike because we are limited. And under all before us lie the deserts of past eternity. And the lover also says, that in front of us there is vast eternity yes but this is desert because after death our this life ends our physical entity and enters into the domain of soul it is eternal but there is no physicality there is no fleshly aspects there thy beauty shall no more be found nor in thy marble vault shall sound my echoing song in fact we will die you will die your beauty shall be no more be found at your age when you are dead at the marble vault at the tombstone or the grave where you will be resting permanently what i saying what i call the prey of my love would be only the echoing song but no result there as you will not be in the state of responding to me then one shall try that long preserved virginity. The virginity where which you are so long protecting unity and you are not willing to have physical intimacy together. That long preserved virginity that you are proud of. Who should feast there? The worms that will feast on your body. And your point honor turn to dust. The ingenious, the meaningless the meaningless honor that you are having at present moment will turn into ashes and my sexual passion my desire all are for your sake but you are disdainfully meaninglessly dishonoring all those aspects what would be the state of that passions it will turn into ashes so, what's the best proposition? The grips a fine and private place. Okay. The cynical attitude is quite clear. The lover says, grave is a very fine place, peaceful place, private place. Nobody would come to disturb you. But none, I think, do their embrace. But is the grave, is in the grave, we'll be able to embrace each other, making love. Now, therefore, while the youthful hue sits on thy skin like morning dew as 
your rosy color of youth is so brightening the morning dews that on your skin so appealing while thou, thy willing soul transpires at every pore with instant fires your eagerness of mind that that transports your every every pore of your skin with a fire of excitement and that excitement also attracts me towards you and that is the case as your body instantly wants me and me too instantly wants you why are you coy why are you shy why are you unwilling to have that physical intimacy which one should enjoy at its youth now let us support us while we may and now like amorous birds of prey so let's come put us support us like that of amorous birds of prey the amorous birds which are so fond of making loves together never get separated such should be the case of us rather at once our time devour than languish in slow chap power the slow but yielding power that the time has will surely languish us will pine will project us will ultimately devour us in its power the lover thus proposes let us roll all our strength and all our sweetness up into one ball the biblical reference is clear the creation of the universe is like that of a ball and the entity of god is like that of a hemisphere the halves of each lover and beloved loved and the lover love that and the lover are the universal concept of union of oneness that union of oneness has been referred to in uh, many of the dance poetry and that is also being stated here the oneness of lover and the beloved is uh, make uh, has made a statement here let us roll all our strength being sweet to each other and be a perfect union together and make a physical intimacy and tear our pleasures with rough strife with rough stripes refers to our physical intimacy or desires of extreme pleasures that desire makes us closer to each other so roughness is required to make a uh, mart out of it and a throw and throw the iron gates of life the iron gates of life is the caged ourselves the caged we by the name of body we cannot liberate our feelings from our body in some times so you have to be beyond our body to make an intimacy of uh, sex and intimacy of love making thus though we cannot make our son stand still yet we will make him run the final proposition is quite clear as we cannot make time stand still here that son refers to uh, the reference of time so we cannot make a time stand still we have to go with the time and that is the reality of life and that is the better way of thinking about life and that is the better way of a lover and a beloved of their fruition of love they must unite and they should enjoy being a youth so the last line also refers to a biblical text which is joseph where um, he stopped uh, or hide the son only to take revenge on israel this so this sort of uh, biblical references are plenty here but simplified tone and straightforward message and a beautiful lyrical phrase will attract you towards this poem and your version of reading will not be as typical as that sort of dance because metaphysical concepts are not so complex here even though a few of the geographical statement is given but uh, ganges are no foreign to us it is in fact our references of indian rubies and such things is uh, geographical analogs that we find so it's beautiful reading have fun like share comment and stay tuned bye bye